Today's tutorial is super fun and practical. This pattern includes three different sizes for these nesting storage totes, and I can't wait to show you how to make them. So today's project are these three great nesting bins. They fit just inside of one another and the pattern includes all three sizes. So I'm just gonna tuck these out of the way so I can show you how to make them. We're gonna be making the largest size on set today, but the pattern includes all the dimensions for all three. So the fabric requirements I'm gonna give you will also be enough to make all three. So keep that in mind. So up first, you are going to need three and a half yards of whatever fabric you choose. You're also going to need three packages of this Bozal Interform Plus Stabilizer, as well as a package of either the large or the medium grommets. I used large for the big tote and medium for the next two sizes. So let me show you how to make it. So to get started, you're gonna to wanna to print off your templates that are found in the pattern, and each size has a set of two quarter circles. One that is gonna be for the bosal and one that is for the fabric. And the larger of the two is for the fabric. So keep that in mind. And so for this large tote that I'm making, I have cut 16 inch squares. You need one for the exterior and one for the lining. So you can see I have this cut and ready to go. And we are just going to fold this in half in both directions and give it a good press at the iron so it's nice and smooth. So let's take it over here. We just wanna make sure this is laying as flat as possible. So I folded it that way and then we'll fold it in half again so that it's in fourths. There we go. And then we can bring this back over here and I can use my quarter circle template and it, it's marked here and says these two sides need to be against our folds, which we have. And then you can use a Sharpie or a pen because this is all gonna be in the seam and we can trace our quarter circle here. Just like so. And so that leaves the size that we need. And so now I like to use my scissors and cut this out. We're just gonna cut right on that line. Perfect. All right, and there is the first of our fabric circles. It turns out great. Like I said, you're gonna make two of these. And then in the same way, but without ironing, because the bosal is, is fusible, there's fusible on the back, and you do not wanna press that onto your iron plane. I just like really held it with my hands in place. And then that smaller template fit right on there, we traced it, and then we cut it out. And so how this works out is it ends up being one inch smaller than your fabric, which leaves a half inch of reveal all the way around. And so now we can center this up on here, and then we can take it over to the iron, and we'll flip it over and give it a press from this side. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna make sure but this feels nice and even all the way around. And then just press it with a hot dry iron until the whole thing is fused. Make sure there aren't any spots that are still lifting. I want it to be nice and stuck. Okay. All right, that looks really good. And so I do want you to keep in mind that you're only gonna fuse the bosal to one of those fabric circles. The other one is going to be left plain. 
and that's going to be for our lining. And so just like we did this for the base of the tote, now we need to prep the outside. So let's get everything ready for that. So we're ready to move on to the sides of our bin. So you are going to cut from your fabric two rectangles that measure 16 by 45, and from your bosal you will cut one that measures 15 by 44. The overall rule is your bosal is going to be one inch smaller in both directions from your fabric. And so that's what we've done here. I also want to show you a great little tip. So on my bosal, it wasn't quite long enough after I had cut out my circle. And so I just seamed together this little piece with a zigzag stitch and it worked so great. And it's a great way to conserve that bosal and have less waste. So I highly recommend that if that's something that you need to do. So now we can go ahead and fuse this bosal to our fabric. So with a little movie magic, we have this all fused and ready to go. And so now we're gonna go ahead and fold this right sides together and we're gonna take a half inch seam allowance and close up this loop. So let's go ahead and take this to the machine. All right, so we'll have this all lined up and we're gonna go ahead and sew down this straight edge with a half inch seam allowance. We take a few stitches here and I am gonna back stitch at the start and stop. And this makes it really easy because the bosal is out of the way of where we're stitching. Okay. All righty. So now we can actually press this open. This is one instance where I'm going to press this seam open. It's just going to help this lay nicely. And so if you have a small iron or if you have a pressing cloth, you're going to want to be really careful because remember, this is all fusible. So let's go ahead and take this over to the iron and I'm just going to be really careful as I work to press this back. So we're just going to use the tip of the iron and just make sure that this is as flat as we can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just generally we want that seam to be open. I think that looks pretty good. And so now I'm going to actually flip this right sides out. I'm going to make sure that that seam is laying nice and flat. And if it weren't, we could touch that up from the outside, but it actually looks really nice. And so about a quarter inch away from that seam, I'm just going to do some top stitching to just anchor that. And that's why we've pressed it open. We're going to catch that seam on the inside. So let's go ahead and take it to the machine. So I've gone ahead and removed the table from my sewing machine just to help make this easier because you do have to bunch this up quite a bit to get this under the needle. And so I'm just going to move my needle over a little bit to make this easier. All right, and then I'll line this up under the presser foot. The biggest trick here is you just want to make sure you're only sewing through one layer. You don't want any of the bottom side to be caught in your, um, under your needle. Take a few stitches. Again, make sure everything is staying out of the way, and then we'll just zoom down one side and come back the other. Slide this out and then we'll come down the other side.
great. So we have that all secured. It's ready to go. And so now we can attach our base to the body of this bin. I'm gonna go ahead and put the tray back on and I'll meet you back here at the machine. All right, so I almost forgot to mention, I have turned this wrong sides out. And then I also need to use some clips or pins to make sure that this is all gonna stay lined up. And so I have these here. I'm going to fold this kind of in half. And then I'm gonna fold this in half. And I want to match up the two half marks. And it feels a little tricky as you're getting started, but eventually it's all just gonna settle in there. And so we're just gonna put some clips on either side. And I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these clips around and have this ready to go before we start sewing. And then we're gonna close this with a half inch seam allowance. All right, so I have now turned this wrong sides out and I have matched up my circle with the outside of my bin. And so in order to do that, I folded all the pieces in half and matched up those four points. And those were the first clips I put in. And then I just eased that circle all the way around and I used a lot of clips. I know I don't always do that, but this is one project where it will really make a difference and you'll be glad that you did. And so now we have that all clipped all the way around and we can go ahead and close this up with a half inch seam allowance. So now we can take it to the machine. And the beautiful thing about this bosal is you really can just kind of make it go where you need it to go. And so I'm gonna put my presser foot down here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this first clip out of the way. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I know there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot going on here. Okay, so we're gonna take a few stitches. I'm gonna back stitch. We want this to be nice and secure. And we are just slowly gonna make our way around this circle. And just remove those clips as you go. Right, we have made it all the way around the base. And so now we're just gonna take our scissors and we're gonna snip just to help ease this in. You don't have to do anything crazy, just a few snips all the way around the curves. Just be careful that you don't go through your stitch line. We just wanna make sure that this will ease in 
with no issues. All right, now that is ready to go. So now in the exact same way that we've done that, I made the lining of the bag. It's actually much easier because you don't have to fight with the bosal, but all the measurements from your fabric on this one are the exact same on the lining. I pressed the seam open, top stitched, clipped the bottom, half inch seams, all exactly the same. And so now, we want to turn this one right sides out. And we want to make sure that the right side is on the inside of our lining. So this is my finished edge. And I'm going to tuck this inside of the lining. And I am matching up where those side seams are. I want those to end up in line with each other in the end. So we're just going to make this fit inside. There we go. Going to use those same clips. We won't need quite so many this time since we're not dealing with the curve. Let's start by putting one in there. And then making sure that this is all going to lay nicely and our top edge can line up. So I'm going to take some time and get this all clipped up and then I'll meet you back at the machine when it's ready to go. All right, I have this all clipped along that top edge. I do want to mention that I've left this section right here. I've put two clips close together to remind me that, that I want to leave this open. That's where I'm actually going to turn this right sides out. Um, so you want to be sure to leave that. And so let's go ahead now and put this under the needle. I'll take those two clips out with the beginning and then we can put our needle down, back stitch. We're really going to put uh, a lot of pressure on that as we turn it so we want to make sure that we, we back stitch really well. And then we can just go all the way around with a half inch seam. All right, we're approaching where I have those other two clips to remind me to leave that opening. So when I get here, I'm just gonna back stitch again and then we can trim our threads. A little bit farther and then back stitch. I'll do that a few times. There we go. All right, so now we get to turn this thing right sides out. So I'm just going to reach in this opening here and I like to just kind of grab hold of that bosal and pull it through. Just be gentle, don't tug too hard. There we go. And tuck that inside. It is starting to take shape. 
So now we're going to go and we can give a really nice clean press to this top edge. We're going to make sure we tuck in the excess fabric here in our opening. So we're just going to fold that under. We've got that half inch to work with. And once we have this all pressed all the way around, I'm going to go ahead and just finish this off with top stitching and I'll meet you back here when that's all done. All right, so we press this down, we top stitch the entire top edge to enclose our bin. And now I have folded this in half along that seam line on the side, just straight across that way. And now we are ready to make the marks to add the grommets for our handles. And so in the package of the grommets, they look like this. And there's a little guide that is included in there um, that's gonna help us mark where these need to go. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna see the width of this and it is 22 inches wide laying flat which means I need to come over 11 inches so I'm at five so we're gonna mark that center point and then we can bring our ruler in and I am going to measure over two and a half inches so one two and a half that's right in line with my little chalk line and then here is our template that comes with the package of grommets and I'm just gonna slide this in so that this top edge that meets up with this angle will be right with the edge of my bin. And then the straight line is gonna line up with the edge of my ruler. And so then I can hold this in place and there's an opening where I can mark the area that we're gonna cut out for the grommet. So I'm just gonna run this in here. You could use a pen, whatever marking tool is easiest for you. There we go, and that's gonna leave that little circle, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we'll flip this over. Two and a half is what I'm looking for. I'm gonna slide this under. Make sure it's straight in line. Go ahead and mark these. And I can move my ruler. Finish marking. And now we can use our scissors to cut these out. So let's go ahead and grab those. This is the scariest part. <laughs> but we're just gonna pinch this and just make a snip to get started. And then now we can slide our scissor in here and just follow right along the edge that we marked. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. All right, so now I'm gonna go through and cut all of these out so that they're ready for our four grommets and I'll meet you back here. All right, we've cut all those out. I went ahead and installed two of our grommets and I'm gonna show you how to do these other two. So in the package, you'll notice there are some that look like this that have this little flange and some that have these prongs. And these are a set that go together for each one of your finished grommets. So we are going to just slide the flanged part underneath. Make sure we catch all of our layers in there. And then the prongs are gonna go from the top and we'll line up that middle and you just have to give it a little pressure and they just clip into place. It's pretty simple. So let's do that one more time. The flange goes to the back, prongs to the top, and then press down. So we're just gonna make sure that that is nice and secure. And then we have all of the grommets in place and we're ready to add our handles. So let me just talk you through what I did there. So I have two rectangles that measure 17 by one and three quarters. And so I have two of these stacked together and I just sewed down both long sides and then turned those and tucked the edges under and top stitched. These are gonna be hidden kind of in the back and we're gonna top stitch across the top. So let's go ahead and look at the finished tote and I'll show you how that looks. So here are these. Here's our other sizes. Remember the pattern includes all three and here is the handle. And so we just fold that through, top stitch across here, and the same on the other side. 
and it works out so great. I absolutely love this project. It's great for storing toys and blankets and just keeping things organized. I can't wait to see what version you make and I'll see you next time on At Home. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching At Home. We're so excited to be almost a million quilters strong here at Missouri Star. And so if you haven't already joined our family, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of all of our future tutorials. And we'll see you soon.